it is a great honor for me to be invited to this conference hosted by the protocol today. So today uh, I am supposed to uh, speak a little bit about the uh, soft skills in Japan. And they, so I would like to make a presentation titled uh, The Soft Power of Japan. So without further ado, I would like to start my presentation. So I think the, uh, uh, all of you are, are familiar with the word soft power. And actually, the word soft power was uh, initiated by the uh, Professor Joseph Nye of the Harvard University. Uh, he started using those words in the 1980s, and the, uh, he published a book titled Soft Power in the year 2004. So then the... Uh, so the was uh, uh, soft power uh, has been have been a sort of the established uh, uh, notion. This uh, soft power is uh, sort of the contrary or the contrast to the hard power. Hard power means the military and economic powers which can be used as the uh, coercive uh, powers for in the international society. So that is the uh, the hard power is the sort of the normal power for a state or the country. And the, <clears throat> so as for the soft power, the, it is something that can attract the uh, people and the other countries people, for instance, the uh, cultural influence and so on. So it could be said that the, uh, the uh, soft power uh, can be a very powerful tool for diplomacy. And the, uh, the, the notion of soft power contains several elements. The first one is, as I said earlier, the cultural element. And the, uh, in the cultural element, uh, the, uh, perhaps uh, there will be a lot of the sub-elements as well. And also, in, uh, the soft power contains the uh, uh, values, such as the uh, democracy, human rights, and the peace. And also foreign policy as such can be a sort of the, uh, um, the, the, the soft power. The good example could be the uh, uh, Norway. The, as we all know, the Norway has been conducting a lot of diplomacy for mediation in the international conflicts. So the foreign policy by Norway can be a very good soft power. So uh, once again, coming back to the elements of the soft power, the culture is a very important element. So today I would like to focus on this uh, element, culture. So sometimes uh, we are conducting the so-called cultural diplomacy. And the, in the case of Japan, I think the, uh, the Japanese culture is attracting uh, quite a lot of people from all over the world. So that is why the, uh, the Japanese government has been conducting the cultural diplomacy. But if you, you could say, the, if you say the culture, so uh, it will have a lot of the sub-items or sub-elements, uh, traditional art, modern art, pop culture, such as computer games, literature, for instance, by the uh, Murakami Haruki, and also the culinary art is also a very important element. The, because of the uh, such uh, uh, attractiveness uh, of the Japanese culture, now the, a lot of the foreign uh, tourists are visiting Japan and they are enjoying and experiencing the Japanese traditional and modern culture. So the question is, the, how can we, how can uh, the government of Japan attract the people from the world? to the Japanese culture. So I would say that the uh, uh, people's interest comes first. So it is not a sort of the, uh, the initiative by the, the government. Rather, the people in the all over the world uh, have a strong interest in the Japanese culture. Until the year 2012, uh, the number of the foreign tourists to Japan uh, have been uh, uh, more or less more uh, stabilized around 10 million people. However, since 2013, 
the number of the foreign tourists uh, started booming. So before the COVID-19, in the year 2019, the number of the foreign tourists to Japan was uh, 30 million people. So more than uh, three times uh, before the 2012 level. Right now, the, uh, the people are very interested in the Japanese culture. So they, uh, I believe that the, the, now the internet is quite uh, prevailing. So it is very easy for all of us to get the information uh, through the internet about the, the, the cultures in the other countries. So basically, the people are very interested in a lot of the uh, 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 sub items of the culture but the people want to have excitement and uh, surprise unpredictability emotion and pleasant feelings through the experiences of the culture in the other countries so the i think that the uh, i could i would say that the um, people are just enjoying the uh, culture the so the next question is, the, there might be a gap between the cultural diplomacy and the people's preference because the, the ja government of Japan, in the case of the government of Japan, uh, it is conducting cultural diplomacy according to its policy, but the, they may have uh, differences uh, bit with the, the, uh, the people's, uh, people's preference. So I think that the, the, the government of Japan, the government should not be dogmatic in, the conduct, in conducting the cultural diplomacy. So as I said earlier, the people want to have the cultural experiences and that is why the people are visiting the foreign countries. And the, of course, the, we have the, uh, some technology such as virtual uh, reality. However, the uh, actual experiences will be uh, something different from the virtual reality. In the case of the cuisine, uh, I, I believe that the, it is quite true. So in the cultural diplomacy, in the, well, I, I, firstly, the, I have to say that in the traditional diplomacy, rather, Logic is very important, and we have to uh, attract the, the reason of the people. However, in the case of the cultural diplomacy, rather, uh, logic is not so important, and the instinct, emotion, and the image are important. And the, we have to mobilize the people's emotion and the uh, instinct, and the, so that uh, the uh, it is. I believe that the cultural diplomacy is a bit different from the, the uh, traditional diplomacy. So uh, cultural diplomacy is a rather easy going uh, diplomacy, I believe. The, but the, um, the most important point of the cultural activities or cultural diplomacy is that the most of the cultural activities are initiated by the private people, private sector. And the, of course, the and the government is conducting the cultural activities uh, on their own. However, the resources by the government for the cultural activities uh, are limited. And the, rather, the, the, uh, the cultural activities are uh, conducted by the private people. So coming to the image, the, um, I think the, uh, uh, in the cultural activities or cultural diplomacy, the image is so important. And the, uh, <clears throat> however, the image is a very difficult uh, subject to deal with. And the, if the, uh, we mishandle the uh, image, perhaps it will be very, very detrimental to the country or the people. And the, <clears throat> Through, uh, because of the internet, uh, for us, it is very easy to get the information at a very short period of time. So it is easy for us to uh, have an access to information, but also it is easy for us to be very viral 
in good sense or bad sense. And the people are very flooded with the much information and the news right now. And the, so that means the people have less time and less concentration for each news. So we are very exposed to the social media uh, services such as Instagram and X. And the people are scanning the, a lot of the images and a lot of photographs uh, with the, uh, in a very short period of time. So the question is, how can we get the attention of the dear people? Uh, how uh, we will be able to mobilize the people's attention through images. There are several examples. This example is the, um, perhaps you are very familiar with this uh, wood print in the Edo period. And this uh, wood print was produced in the nine, uh, 1830s, in, uh, about 190 years ago. This is one of the series of the uh, 36 scenes of the Mount Fuji, the highest mountain in Japan. And this is a sort of the uh, postcard of the beautiful sceneries in the uh, Edo period of Japan. And it is, a, uh, well, I think that it is a sort of the popular art. And the, this um, has, um, wood print uh, had been uh, very famous and popular in Japan. And the, however, the, uh, this, the popularity is rather limited to the Japanese people and some Japanologists in the uh, foreign countries. However, the, uh, in the 21st century, I think because of the internet, uh, this um, uh, wood print uh, became very famous and popular in the international world. And uh, I believe that the, uh, this is the uh, most uh, famous uh, picture in Japan, I believe. But the, the painter of this outprint, uh, whose name is the Katsushika Hokusai, uh, he never thought of the, such kind of the popularity, uh, especially the popularity in the international world. So um, I believe that the, uh, this is a very uh, novel and uh, exciting design, but the, uh, the, the painter uh, never thought about that. The, within uh, almost 200 years later, this auto print became very famous. The next example is the, I'm not, I'm not quite sure whether you are familiar with this, and the, uh, in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands, uh, there is a very famous museum, Van Gogh Museum. And the Van Gogh Museum, uh, has, uh, which was established in the uh, 1973, 50 years ago, and it has a lot of the uh, pictures or paintings by the, the uh, Van Gogh. And this year, this museum made a collaboration with Pokemon by Nintendo. And the, this picture is a sort of the uh, uh, painted by the uh, Pokemon uh, artist, and the, uh, absolutely it is a sort of homage to the self-portrait by uh, Van Gogh. And the, this museum is now full of the people, especially the young people and children who are very fond of the Pokemon. So this picture uh, gives us a very big impression, but the, the uh, there is a sort of the surprise, the collaboration between Pokemon and Van Gogh. So not many people would have thought about it. The third example. This is the picture taken at the time of the our emperor and the empress uh, uh, <coughs> paid a visit to Leiden uh, in uh, the year 2000. And the, the emperor and the empress uh, uh, walked along a uh, canal in Leiden, in the city of Leiden. And the, suddenly, uh, there was a, a dormitory of the female students of the Leiden University. And the three female students uh, talked to the emperor. And the so emperor responded to the female students, and they had a conversation over the window. And, uh, and this picture was uh, taken at that moment, and uh, this picture 
uh, caused a huge sensation in the Netherlands. The reason is the, uh, the, at that time, in the year 2000, because of the, uh, uh, the, the dark history between the uh, Netherlands and Japan uh, during the Second World War, uh, seven, there were several people who had uh, uh, antipathetic feeling or the acrimonious feeling towards uh, Japan, especially the Japanese emperor. But the, this picture showed the, uh, the humanity of the, the uh, uh, emperor. So the, this picture uh, redressed the, the feeling of the, uh, or the Dutch people towards Japan. So that, is a, uh, that caused a uh, big uh, effect on the, the, uh, the emotion of the Dutch people against uh, the Japanese people. But the, I have to say, this is also a uh, very surprise to us because the, we didn't, we, we means the, the, especially the security people did not expect that, that this kind of things would happen. The fourth example, this is a very uh, horrible uh, picture. So some of you may uh, know that, and the, this picture was taken in the year in uh, 2015 uh, at the shore of the Turkey uh, on the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, this boy uh, <clears throat> named Alan Kurdi, uh, who was a two-year-old uh, boy uh, from Syria, and the, <clears throat> uh, he was uh, drowned in the sea and uh, eventually he was dead. And uh, this uh, picture caused a big sensation in the international society. And this was uh, at the moment of the migrant uh, crisis in Europe. And the, <clears throat> this clearly showed the misery and uh, the suffering of the migrant people. However, the thing is that the, how many people still remember this uh, picture? So. It went viral in the year 2015, but the, uh, I don't remember how long that kind of the interest uh, or attention lasted. So coming to the uh, image, uh, there are many challenges. So the first question is how we will be able to create a good image of a country or a person. And the, that is a sort of the fundamental challenge. And the, the next uh, uh, question would be uh, the, whether or not the government can control the image. So I, I believe this is a very uh, easy question because the, the government cannot control the image. And the, the third question is the image can be sustained for a long period of time. And as you can see, the case of the Alan Kurdi's photo, uh, I do not think it can uh, last for long. However, the uh, contradictory thing is that the sometimes negative image and stereotype image can be uh, lasted for long. Um, the, as I said earlier, the, uh, we, uh, the Japanese people, had a very uh, terrible history, dark history with the Netherlands over the uh, Second World War. And the, so that kind of the negative image cannot be eradicated very easily. Likewise, the stereotype image can last for a long period of time. <clears throat> the fifth question is, or fifth challenge would be, the how to deal with the fake news, because the, nowadays it is very easy to fabricate a, a fake image or fake news. So how we will be able to distinguish uh, uh, from the uh, real uh, image uh, from the uh, fake image? So once again, uh, coming back to the first uh, challenge, how we will be able to come up with a good image and the, how we will be able to attract uh, all the uh, mobilized emotion of the people. So that is the fundamental challenge. So that concludes my uh, presentation and thank you very much for your uh, attention.